So hello everyone. Um, welcome to this space. Welcome to this information session for Bre Breathing Pathways. Um, my name is Hannah and I use she, her pronouns. And I'm currently calling in from the early hours of a big smoke city um, in Indonesia. And so um, I'm in a city called Yogyakarta. It's one of the kind of cultural and performance centers of, of this island. <clears throat> so it's already alive. <laughs> you think six o'clock is early, but everyone's been awake <laughs> a few hours. Um, but welcome and thank you for being here. I'm one of the co-teachers, co-facilitators, and it's so good to see you and be here with you. Yes, and good evening or good morning. <laughs> uh also wanted to say hi to the to you that are here and also to people who are going to join the recording if you're going to listen to that later uh, so my name is angel i go by the pronoun he and they and i'm based upstate new york in the catskills a couple of hours from uh, new york city uh, and yeah i had the pleasure to co-teach that uh amazing experience uh, i feel it's more than a class it's been a profound experience this year uh with hannah and um 16 people that joined this class on the this past year and we are finishing up in august and wrapping up with our end of year retreats and we'll be starting our new cycle uh of practitioner training in september uh, I don't think we have the exact date when the first class is yet, but uh, we're going to, to do that very soon. And so tonight, uh, this morning, we'd like to kind of present you a little bit the program. Um, it's quite unique. I'm not saying that because we are doing it, but I think that Hannah and I went through, you know, different breathwork trainings and I've been a practitioner for many years. And then we looked at um what we really liked and what we learned and also what was missing and i feel that's how this uh program was born right to look at what is really needed as a practitioner in the world that we are in and we are moving into uh what kind of uh container do we need to uh, embody and understand and study so we are not just breath work practitioner but we are a healer at large and I use the word healer with, uh, you know, some little things around whatever defines us holding space for someone else, for a group of people and the context in which we're holding it, which include the collective, which include the land, which include the individuals and which include the diversity and the complexity um, that is at play when we're doing that. And breath work is obviously the tool that we're bringing in. And there is, you know, we'll go, we're going to go into what's in the program, but there's a lot of trauma training and exploration of different type of breath. And, you know, already the more technicality about it. Uh, but there's a lot of layers also that are more on the, on the context, on the community, on their spirituality, on how does this fit into the world we are into. So this training is not only relevant, but it's informed by the world, not just by techniques and uh, knowledge on trauma and on breath. There's a lot of school out there to do that. We're also presenting that, but we wanted to add more layers to it, which I think is what makes the, the training a little bit different. Yeah, thank you for that introduction, Angel. Um... I think one of the key important things around what this course has brought around for me is the real, yeah, the real context of medicine people and what we're supposed to do in this time, right? So it's really responsive um, to our lineages. It's responsive to our histories, our collective histories, and it's rooted in service that is not capitalizing on the wellness industry but trying to um, address some of the ways that 
colonialism and capitalism has extracted from that um, space. And so it's a really embodied and community-centered approach to healing collective oppressions and working together to um, to combat and maybe combat is not the right word but you know we're, we're not only fighting but we're also uh, breathing and living and modeling and I think it's really hard at the moment for folks in uh, the healing space to to not slip into the previous models of what it means to succeed in this space, um, to slip into um, the ways we've been taught to, to succeed, right? So it's really around, um, yeah, returning to a resurgence of what community looks like and what abundance looks like and what resisting, um, those characteristics of, of supremacy culture looks like. Um, and so, yeah, it's deeply spiritual in this sense, but it's also deeply practical. It is, um, it is being in the garden, right? It's being with the roots, it's tending uh, to it. Um, and much of this process is also tending to our own garden and the way that we have internalized oppression in various different ways. Um, we have internalized systems of values and thoughts that we've been conditioned by. And so there's a lot of root work. There's a lot of root work. And, um, and through this is empowerment, right? It's processes of empowerment. Um, and in consequence, kind of, you become a breathwork facilitator um, and can bring this to your clients and can bring this to the people and communities around you. Um, so maybe we can just get a little bit of a feel because I'm new to everyone in this room. Um, so maybe you can let me let us know in the chat box where you heard about us, how you're connected to us, um, where you are based, and just a little sense of kind of the web in this space. Yeah, nice. You're doing that. So we are going to have a Q and A. &A. We're going to talk. Uh... A little bit more about the program um and we're going to share a little bit of the brochure so if you didn't get it yet you can request it from us and we can send you you know the brochure but the idea was to make it a little bit more live and interactive um so i don't want to read it too much i just want to share a little part of it uh just to tell you a little bit about the structure of that program and then we can probably go more you know personal uh on what's um yeah what's happening uh with that class so it's a it's a one-year program uh that's starting in september that will end in august next year and the course is structured with online classes every month which are live and also recorded um we have an online uh platform learning platform where basically all the content is there the uh, live classes the uh, exercise the readings the exchange and things like that so all of that online content is there so in case you have a busy life or you can attend because of personal requirements or something changed in your life you know you're able to return to the content and to connect there and on top of that monthly class, we have weekly updates and content share so that we had whatever the discussion we have been having, you know, the Hannah and I have been trying to make the class not structured in a more, in a too traditional way where it's module one, module two, module three, and we kind of stick and move on. Uh, we've been very much moving with our students, with the group and with what is alive. And so those weekly uh, class update and content share are very often relating to what we are studying at the moment, but also what's showing up for you, what's coming up for you as an individual, or maybe what's happening in your community or in your life. 
Um, we have also a weekly Bryce Rock session uh, that at some point, uh, you know, quickly into the class, you need to start attending. And there is, you know, different practitioners uh, beyond just Hannah and I, where you can attend this class. So you have a strong personal practice by the end of the year. Uh, and we also have uh, a five days end of year retreat in person. And this year it's happening here in the Catskill, upstate New York. Uh, you might be there next year, you might be somewhere else. Uh, but it's kind of a, a way to close the year and to to wrap up the whole uh, yeah the whole content. Uh, and it happens also that sometimes we have extra classes on top of the monthly one. We just had one recently. So if we feel, you know, the class are pretty rich and dense, it's around three hours uh, with a lot of interactions and sometimes smaller groups, uh, work group together. But sometimes we feel that there is more that's needed in some part of the content and we add modules. Basically, we had content that is live and interactive so we can process and, you know, get used basically to what it means to hold space. Uh, because we're going to practice that with each other during the year. Uh, so that's kind of the overall structure. And I don't know, Hannah, if you want to go more a little bit about the, the details about what we are exploring here, maybe. Or yeah, is... maybe I just yeah elaborate a little bit on um, the format. So yeah, thank you for, for giving it into the, the logistics. But there are kind of three main pillars of this training um, and the way that I have um and we have evolved in in the sense and it's um our key fundamentals of breathwork breathwork as our foundation and then we have our shamanic approach so this is our shamanic learnings our invitations into our own lineages our invitations into our own heritages what is living through us and tapping into that practice and tapping into that wisdom and then thirdly, the embodied social justice lens, right? So what does it mean to attend to collective historical institutional trauma? What does it look like attending to collective nervous systems? Um, who are the communities that we are, our hearts are aching to be part of or to work with? Um, how do we cultivate um, our skills and skill set to be in those communities and so there's within the embodied social justice part is also processes of self-care and, and resilience and capacity building and so those are the three so breathwork found the breathwork foundations we've got our shamanic approach and then it, the embodied social justice um, and this is I mean we said it at the top of this meeting but that these are what we feel is uh, makes this breathwork training slightly different, right, from the others, and um, and it's something that I'm actually I want to say because it, I'm really proud of this course. I'm really proud of what it is that we're doing collectively, and it's really exciting to be part of a group of folks who are ready to to sit in the discomfort of attending to inequality, right? To sit in the discomfort of being with injustice and being with um, um, the ways that we potentially have perpetrated or um, been victims of. And so it's, it's a really exciting space to be in. And I think it's, it's emergent, which means it's happening anyway. And I'm just so um, honored to be to be part of it. Yeah, so there is, you know, a lot of content here and I don't want to go over the brochure and, you know, if you want the brochure, just email and we are very happy to send it to you. I hate usually when I'm on a Zoom call and people are just reading uh, what's on the slides, so I'm not trying not to do it. <laughs> um, uh, we'd love to, you know, there's a lot to say about each of the modules and the content of the course, but uh, we'd love to open it to any of you here that's present and maybe, you know, uh, bring any question you might have 
or maybe even reflections. You know, we're always happy to hear reflections and then to hear what's moving for you when you're hearing that, when you're reading that. Uh, or maybe you have, you know, you want more details or you want us to talk a little bit more about certain aspect of the course and uh, we'd be, you know, very happy to, to elaborate on that. So I believe you can unmute yourself now. So yeah, if you want to, to ask a question or join or even introduce yourself again, it's very welcome. I'll jump in and start. Um, uh, hello, everyone. I'm John. Um, I was wondering how long you guys have been doing this course for. Yeah, we started. It was our first year of training when we started in September. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you guys have you guys made um, any notes of changes or improvements for year two after having done the initial initial year of it? We're just talking about it right before we came online. We did. I'm going to let Anna talk about it because she was just sharing about it. And yeah, do you want to share a little bit on that, Anna? Yeah, thank you so much, John. Thank you. <laughs> um, and this is, I guess, the um, yeah, the beauty of being here in the second round, right? As as beautiful as the first year was, and and powerful as it was, I think um, we the way that emerged, actually the things that have changed is just more about the structural um, organization of the of timing, I guess. Um, but also because the content is really rich and the, the histories and collective wisdoms between both Angel and I and the guest speakers that we that we welcome into this course um, is so rich, but sometimes it's, it's managing um, the the timing and capacity right so one of the first kind of um things that kind of conceptually sh shifting for us is that the first six months is really into our own practice into our own process of learning and unlearning it's our pro own process of developing our own rituals and breathwork um commitments right so really creating a daily practice really creating a weekly practice really going into our own processes of what it means to learn about consent what it means to learn about our social location within our communities what our privileges are um, how we attend to them how we attend to the the intimacy or the distance between our own ancestors, right? So this is kind of our first, the first half will be really attending to our own process. Um, and in that first half, we're also looking at how to hold space and because we're, and how to create sacred containership. And we do this for ourselves first, right? So this is kind of, that is how we're, um, kind of structurally organizing it. And then after the, the six month period, this is when we get into the practicalities of application, right? What does that translation period look like? What does it look like to bring that into, um, into the work with other people? Um, extending those skills. Um, and so we, that's kind of the main uh, shift, right? So the first six months is us into ourselves, then past the six month period, we're going into one-to-ones. So working with just one individual, working with their body and nervous system. And then um, we, we work on that for around two months and then we'll go into group sessions and then we'll go into business structure. Um, so that was a, that's kind of a big learning in terms of understanding our rhythm. Um, Another important point was actually what we learned was the months are elastic, right? Time is elastic <laughs> in between. So sometimes it feels like we really are together. And then sometimes it feels like we really, really far apart depending on what's coming on in the world. And so 
um, what emerged out of this was the real need to lean in and to um, collectively hold the space together. So create connections to um, really empower agency. So to for you as individuals of this course to, to reach out, to connect, to maintain those um, to collectives. And then in the um, second half, we also have a um, mid-month connecting class. And so um, this is because we're going to be working with people. There's going to be a lot coming up in terms of application. There's going to be a lot of learning. There's going to be a lot of mistakes. And it's just really good to be in this space together. Um, so the first six months, it's still monthly, but then we'll have your learning partner and our breathwork sessions, weekly breathwork sessions, and whatever breathwork sessions you want to co-organize um, in your cohort. And then the second half is our monthly sessions continued, um, and then a connecting class in between each session, which is for an hour. Um, and this is, it's non-obligatory, but it has become very, very useful and super rich in terms of um, kind of, fertile soil as it were right it's very very fertile ground so those I think are the main um the main learnings and um yeah and it's been really great with the first year because we've adapted to that right and so it's it's just more about okay <laughs> stepping in being like okay we know this is happening and it might shift you know as we as we go it might be like yeah we might be listening to the community and need more or need less or uh, need a different type of engagement. So we're, we're kind of um, attentive in that sense. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, Angel, do you want to say, do you want to Yeah, add I just want, you know, one of the thing I think that Hannah and I were very connecting about from the beginning, you know, is that we wanted something that was already embodied. Like, shamanism embodied you know breastwork embodied social justice embodied it's very easy i think on the subject of breathwork and trauma and probably also even social justice to get very heady to, to have great ideas and to understand the concept right to understand why we're doing things i think it's a very whole different level of learning once we have a personal experience in our bodies and that takes time. And that's why the class is shaped that way to make sure the first six months we really dive in. So when we're going to serve our client, we have an experience in our bodies of that experience that is happening in front of our eyes. We have some kind of relations to trauma that is not just technical. You know, there's amazing trauma therapists. I've done a lot of trauma training in my life, but no training have changed my life when it was happening with my body when that trauma training was also physical through my breath through touch through something that i could relate to and it really allowed me to integrate this teaching and i think uh i mean for me that's how i see my shamanic practice and my shamanic offering i think that's the only way we can be authentic in our offering because if not you know, we can have a lot of knowledge here, but it's not translated. So the program is designed that way. And that's why we had it as mid-month class, right? To see where, where, where it's moving there. And that's why also, Anna say it's elastic because we might be confronted to something that's showing up in the collective of our group or in the bigger collective or with someone specific and that we want to pose. We want to pay attention and we want to include that. You know, we never want to exclude because we have to get to chapter number three or chapter number four. We want to make sure everything is attended because that's the way we're going to be great people holding space, great healers, great breath worker practitioners is that we don't have that structure that tells us, oh, we need to do this now and this now. It's really alive. The system is alive as the bodies are alive. And so the class is also needs to be framed on that response and not just on a brochure, you know, so we, we've done a brochure and we try to do our best to talk about all what's in it, but it's framed in a way that's more like, I guess, a snake 
in some ways, right? It's, you know, undulating, it's searching, but it's progressing, right? But it's also working with its environment as it progress to its destination. So, uh, and I love that aspect of the class. I mean, it's not the only thing I love there, but I think it's something I've been looking, I can tell you for a long time since my breathwork training and since practice, as a practitioner because i just could not find something that respond as well to that hi max um i'm guessing you were done answering <laughs> um so um I looked quite a bit for um, rap work that was um, oriented towards the shamanic and um, there isn't um, a lot out there. And I was wondering like, what for you um, is the difference between let's say a non shamanic um, oriented rap work versus the shamanic? Yeah, it's a very good question. Thank you, Max, for, for asking. Uh, I don't know if I'm the right person to ask, and I'm making a little joke there, but uh, for me, every breathwork is shamanic in nature, and I have a very hard time to understand how it's not included, right? Uh, but beyond that little um, kind of winkle here, um, I think you know, the feeling is that we cannot reduce a personal experience of someone without including what's in relation to that person. And we could talk about its family, uh, its community, its um, social position, its land, its ancestors, its spirit guides, the directions, the elements, the water, the fire, the wind and the earth. And all those things that are moving into someone where we are not just uh, a chemical reaction. We're not just processes, our trauma moves. There's a lot of things that happen in breath work that is very much in what we call the unconscious part of the body, the unconscious part of the mind. And that's a shamanic territory by essence, by definition. This is what the bridge of the breath is bringing us into. And so I think instead of kind of turning around the pot, which I've experienced in my own training <laughs> by never mentioning those elements and those dimension, let's bring them in. Let's have them being welcome and let's nurture that in our process of transformation. For me, it's very real, right? Sometimes the shamanic part of training, so it's a thing like a little bit out there, right? Some other dimensions or... Uh, but because it's an embodied, an embodied class, an embodied shamanism, it's very much how do we connect to that in a way that's very authentic to me and to you and to someone else and also tap into that power that is available once we have the tool, once we are remembering, once we are unlearning what's in the way. Uh, and by... I feel like by the end of the training or once you start practicing, you know, for some people, it might not be essential, the shamanic part, right? So some people, they might want to be just more trauma therapists in a more strict sense of the term. But even the best trauma therapists today, when I listen to them, you know, like Gabby or others, you know, it's very shamanic what they're talking about, you know? Uh, but for some people and for some of you, you know, it might be something that you really want to bring in. And there is um, flexibility there too, you know. Um, you know, in our class, we have, you know, I would say probably 50-50, right? People that are really wanting to bring that elements because maybe it's part of their previous training or it's part of their life or it's part of how they want to read the world. And for some people it's not really fundamental. I mean, they have the elements, right? But it might not be as important for them to bring in. Uh, my lecture of the breath is from a shamanic perspective on top of a trauma perspective. So I, I, I want to see the two elements because for me, they guide me in my 
guidance process going now you know i hold space um so i have very hard time and i don't remember that well my own training is many years ago uh but i remember uh asking the question about what was happening there and some sharing of people that seems very beyond that realm right that seems way beyond that and uh we didn't have really any tools to answer or to support or even to listen right because if we don't understand right we might not be able to properly listen it's not about answering or giving advice it's about listening from a place that resonate and so i think uh, our goal is to give you the tool so when that happened too and people sometimes go through very powerful uh journeys into the unconscious that you are able to hold the space in a way that's authentic that's non-invasive that's not manipulative and that's not disempowering because that's also what can happen a lot in that space um so it's not neutral right we're engaged but we're engaged in a way that's balanced there's no dynamic of power there there is really support in what we call probably safety today that we make it safe right uh, so we can relate there in, in the best way we can in that moment. So I don't know if that's answering your, your question, Max, but uh, I have a tendency to weave a little bit away and back in when I answer, but hopefully it answer your, your question. I don't know if Hannah wants to add anything, but. Um, yeah, I would. <laughs> um, I think for me, in the understanding of this question. Um, and I think maybe I'll answer it in a little bit more of a heady space. Um, so the way that I understand breath work in its essence, the breath is a universal unifier, right? It is the bridge that connects us from the conscious and the subconscious and everything breathes in this world and we are not alone and we are not unaffected. Breath work is the most intimate or can be one of the most intimate relationships that we have with the environment around us. Like we're literally bringing the air into our own bodies, allowing it into every cell and allowing it to work on us, right? We're giving it permission to work. And <clears throat> in essence, it's a decolonial practice. In essence, it is a unifier and sometimes in and when I say it's a decolonial practice is that it is community rooted right it is connected it's a practice of co-regulation it's an attendance to um, our connection to and when I say community it's not just the people around us it is the inclusion of the collective our ancestors our land our ecology and so when there is an absence of that in a training or in a um, what I would call kind of Western psychology or colonial psychology, where we have processes of diagnosis or di um, processes of um, pathologizing or processes of um, categorizing and processes of fixing, right? Because attending to these systems where the main focus is for you to participate back into the process of work or capitalism. Um, it's a huge disservice, right? It's a, it's a co-opting of this tool um, in order to maintain and reiterate those cycles. And so what makes this, I guess, my, or what is the difference between a shamanic breathwork as opposed to another breathwork right is the inclusion of community and um and it's yeah i find it sometimes quite sad to <clears throat> to acknowledge that there are there are a lot of breathwork trainings right there's a there's a lot that you can learn in the space and many of them work into processes of individualizations right self-optimization or reaching various different forms of um enlightenment for yourself you know um and then also adding to your toolkit as a 
um, as a product, you know, and it's it's a wave that we have to contemplate. I mean, the, the main, uh, let's say the um, the most famous, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean so much, but the biggest names in breath work are you can kind of just see across the scope, right? They're not indigenous elders. They're not folks that have been working with this um, for years, for hundreds and thousands of years. It's mostly um, folks who have gone into those communities and written a book about it, right? Um, so there's that aspect for me into in terms of how what is the difference um, and what makes it a shamanic breathwork. And then the other thing that I want to acknowledge is that shamanism or the practice of it is rooted in our, in our relationship to the earth. And we come from fractured lineages. We live in fractured lineages in terms of our relationship to our own um, space. It might be also we've been displaced over time um, and there's, it's kind of, this is the consequence of the world that we live in. And so acknowledging that, leaning into it, learning about our own um, wisdom and our own heritage and our own relationship to the earth is what it means to be in this work, right? It is not just... Um, okay, people, uh, it's not just people need it, but we need it ourselves. Our own, our own lineage needs this, right? And so it's calling in the prayer of the collective, calling in the helpers, ancestors, allies, um, and be, becoming empowered in it. And I think this is a really important part that Angel just pointed out was often in, um, colonial psychology or Western psychology as the tenets of um, learning about breath work can actually perpetuate cycles of disempowerment or dependency, right? So folks then become, they, they need you, they need you as a, as a healer or as their therapist for years, right? When actually what we're trying to do is empower the individual into their own tools so that they don't need you, right? They're not there as a needing you, but you've shared with them tools and they want to stay in community with you, right? Um, so that's, that's also a, a shift in lens. Um, yeah, and there's more that can be said, but I think uh, that, that's, that's where I'll stop for now. Thank you. So, hi everyone, I, I would also like to ask some questions. Um, some are a bit more practical. Um, I like to understand a little bit more in terms of timing, and not timing, how much time um, it's sort of like recommended to, to the boat, to the course, sort of like on a weekly basis. Uh, not just the minimum, yeah, like, oh, you do this and you do that, but no, if it's gonna be readings and what, what do you think would be like the the recommended sort of like uh yeah amount of time yeah um, um then i would also like to uh know also apart from breath work uh, does the course also include other maybe embodiment practice practices that come together with the with the breath work and also in terms of the integration also if if it includes also like integration practices and um and uh, yeah i mean this is maybe another another different question for another time but i was also looking at the course the path of the warrior which i also found very interesting and then i thought oh in my mind, it's so it sort of like made more sense maybe to do the path of the warrior before the 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 breadwork one, but I think that's more of a personal uh, issue. Uh, maybe just to understand quickly also the differences between one course and the other, and then um, yeah, I saw that Hannah. I think you're going to be in Germany in August in the Global Breadwork Conference, so I'm planning to go there. So maybe then I can just go and say hello and maybe we can 
we can have a chat as well. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay, so I took note of all your question. Thank you, Hironsu. I'm good to have you here. Um, you know, in terms of timing, people often ask me that, you know, for every course, like how long do I need to study and how much time it's going to take. So obviously there's the monthly class and the mid-month connection and the weekly breath work, right? So those are kind of the basic, right? So it's three hours once a month, an hour mid-month and an hour a week or two hours a week for, you know, showing up to the breath work. But that's really uh very little part right because there's also readings you know there's a lot of books that you have to read during the year you know that is supporting uh the teachings and there's all the content that we are sharing um so it really for each person it really depends on our lives right and how much investment we are going to put into it in terms of time, time is an investment, right? How much time I'm going to carve for this program with the rest of my life, my job, my personal life, maybe other training I'm doing. Um, it can definitely be five to 10 hours a week. You know, if you want to go really deep and do the readings and all of that to only a few hours a week. And it really depends how much, you know, we want to invest in it. You know, I think if you do the bare minimum, it's going to be a few hours a week you know, of connection and readings and your breath work. Uh, but there might be some modules where you spend much more time on because you're, I don't know, very passionate about trauma and you want to understand the physiology and the biology and you want to read more about that. And I know I'm, I'm personally a trauma geek and I love anything trauma related. So when it comes to trauma, I love to read more and to listen to more and to really, you know, feel it. But I want to connect that to your second question, which is about the practice. And maybe Hannah has things to say on that too. It's all about the practice at the end of the day. So the practice very often, and that's also a kind of very uh, colonized way of seeing it, is like I go to university or to school and then I leave my life, right? <laughs> it's kind of very slighted and separated. But this work is not like that. This work is happening every day, all the time. So you are, I think we have an opportunity. Everything we share, it's connected to a practice. There's nothing that just blunt knowledge. Okay, just you know, read that and understand it. It's always turn inward and then turn outward. So it's always turn about, okay, how is this relating to my experience? How is this relating to my own trauma, to my ancestry? to where I am in this world. And that's the only way I think we really learn, right? When we have an embodied reaction, when we have an embodied emotion, when we have something moving, and then we can use the tool that we have been taught to practice. And literally that's every day, right? If you are in a relationship, it's 24 <laughs> seven. If you are in relationship with others at work or other things, you know, things are going to get triggered, things are going to happen. And we have an opportunity to bring that into our life. So I would say that the practical aspect is the most generous towards ourselves. It's the one that's going to give us back so much. And also once it's transform ourselves, because it's going to shift things and open things to maybe territory we have never thought about. Maybe we might get even very triggered by some teachings that feel like, oh, you know, I don't like that, right? So we always have an opportunity to, to integrate that, to reflect, to share with each other's, or to, and also to do our own work with it. So that's, I think, the main part of the main time you're going to spend is reflecting this into your own life. And for me, that's where I see that the richness of any class, by the way, that you take uh i think if it's seen as i'm reading a book or i'm going to that online training you know how many trainings we all have been online that is just forgotten that maybe was amazingly beautiful but we didn't bring it home we didn't integrate it into our life practice we saw see it as maybe my meditation time in the morning or my yoga time but it's very sliced right 
So we want to decolonize that. You know, yoga has been colonized so much. We have forgotten what yoga is about. Yoga is a life practice. It's a yoga of life. It's not on the yoga mat. Most of yoga happen outside of the yoga mat. And there are still teachers, you know, I've been blessed with one that really bring that into life, but it's rare, right? And I think that's the only way we remember the teachings without forcing ourselves, right? They, they naturally come because we have a connection to them that is more authentic and that relates to who we are, right? If it doesn't relate to who we are, if it doesn't connect to a part of us, I think it's very easy to forget them and to just, you know, get the head more heavy, right? And it's just one more thing we have to remember. And it's hard to remember that way. But once it's connected to our lives, it's very easy to remember. There's no amount of knowledge that is that we cannot absorb once we relate it. Um, and I think that's one of the ways to become really passionate about this work. And that's why I'm passionate about it, because I see the connection. You know, and now it comes into it. And I just want to answer quickly just on the path of the warrior on this. It's very different, right? This is a practitioner training to become a breathwork practitioner. The path of the warrior is a shamanic training on shamanic tools, but not designed to become a practitioner. That's never was my intent of it. It's more personal uh, practice. It's something that you learn for your own life. I've been asked for so many years to make it a practitioner training and I've kind of somehow resisting it uh, because I think it's very complex to become a shamanic practitioner and it requires so many change in our lives and connection to elders and connection to land that is authentic and decolonizing the way we relate to native people. There's so many elements to it that I don't see it as a less than a two or three year program, to be honest, if I ever were to, to do that. And it's a life program really at the end of the day. Uh, so it's very different. I think here, you know, there is shamanic elements that are brought into the goal of for you to become a practitioner or breathwork practitioner. You know, and that's really what you're going to leave with at the end of the year. And you're going to leave with many more things than just becoming a practitioner. Uh, the path of the warrior is limited to, okay, an immersion, a first immersion into shamanic knowledge uh, through one specific lineage that I've been connected to for over 10 or 15 years, which is Andean cosmology. And, uh, you know, there's many other lineages and there's many other ways to approach that. And so that's also, I think, the complexity of the shamanic past, because like Hannah was mentioning, our ancestry can be very scattered, right? And then the way we connect to it and how we connect to it in an authentic way can be complex. Um, and it's definitely a slow and long process to, to my experience. Yeah, thank you, Angel. Um... Just on the, um, speaking on the logistics of things, and maybe I can just speak into what folks have been sharing with me, right? In terms of how much they're committing, just so that there's a little bit of anecdotal experience. Um, and you're saying that there's, there are a lot of books um, and what they're currently working on is around a book a month. Um, so depending on your, your reading rate, um, and, and then that, that book might also spark a bunch of other research and uh, going into all sorts of stuff, right? So it's not, con it's not an exhaustive um, reading list or research list. Um, but what we have put into place is understanding those three key parts of this training. So the breathwork foundations, the shamanic approach and the embodied social justice. And so those are kind of invitations into that. Um, so a book a month, the practicalities of the class, the connecting class and the breath work, the practical application of your daily practice. Um, so what people are emerging is we've got um, foundations of the breath. There are kind of three pillars that we work with with the breath, which is daily hygiene. So this is breath functionality. How do we actually activate into our processes of healthy breathing or healthful or um, health 
bringing breathing. And um, these are kind of short breathing practices that we can use throughout the day, right? So these are also in response to, it's kind of more like a breathing first aid kit um, kind of thing. We have um, lung capacity or breathing capacity. So practices that can develop your, your capacity building and optimize, quote unquote, optimize. Um, and we will look at various lineages of that work um, as well. And then um, into the long, deep journey breath work, right? So this is the shamanic breath work, um, the longer breath work journeys. And so the invitation is to experiment and play with those pillars of the breath um, and how, um, how it informs us and how it informs our learning. In the second six months, so that's the first six months, right? So you're just going through your own process, you're learning, you're kind of absorbed, you're becoming a sponge whilst also kind of rooting and allowing those waters to, to go into your roots. Um, the second six months is where we start becoming or applying this. So we will be inviting you to work with people. And so this is obviously a much more time in terms of just kind of navigating, coordinating, scheduling, um, and then doing the assignments relevant to that. So we, we have kind of feedback um, forms and wanting to get um, client feedback forms and uh, learning through that. So in the second six months, um, I would say within, within each week, it would be good to do at least one breathwork session per, with another person. Um, and so there's a little bit of logistics around that uh, outside of class. Yeah. yeah. Um, you'll be working with people inside the class as well. We have a learn, we'll assign you a learning partner. Um, and this is just somebody to um, bounce and be in space with together. Um, and a lot can come up in this as well, right? Because this is a, the relationship. And so um, a lot can come up in this, but also the invitation is to be as um, informed and active in your learning, right? Facilitate learning, like we can, we can do so much to stop us from learning, right? So what does it mean to facilitate learning? So it might be, if for example, you struggle with reading to create a reading group, right? Within the, within, the cohort or if for example um it's a limitation to to read large texts right to get it an audio version or to um try and find videos around it or find documentaries that are around it and so it's really about learning facilitating that learning and and using the resource that that will be in this space um yeah so it will as i said time is elastic sometimes it's really goes really quickly and easy and it doesn't take up too much time and sometimes it, it does so um yeah hopefully that answered your question around sue um also i will be in germany i'm so that's so cool that you're going to be there definitely are you there for the whole time okay perfect cool Yeah, I'm planning to be there for the for the whole week. Yeah, nice. so you were you ah. well Yeah, yeah, I'll whole... be there the whole time, okay. and I'll Perfect. I'll also be presenting there. So that's yes, I know. Yeah, cool. I saw it. <laughs> ah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can speak into class size. I don't know. That's oftentimes. Um, a question so we've kind of worked around like um 15 is kind of our um around the number of um and the reason for this is to be able to attend to all the processes that are happening in the room and there's two practice two co-facilitators in this um and what has emerged over this year is I also have an open um, monthly catch-up call 
uh, that is also non-obligatory but um, scheduled. So if anyone wants to tap in, connect, um, share what's going on with them then, and have somebody to hold space for them, then they can book in a call with, uh, with me once a month. Um, Angel hasn't done that yet. <laughs> But I don't turn ask, down when people will. reach out. Yeah, I've been more like, if you reach out, I'm always available. Yeah, but I haven't set up a, a monthly oblig uh, kind of regular call. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have different systems processes. Yeah. Cool. Are there any other? Um, oh, I kind of want to talk into the payments. Just. Um, slightly right so we have a scaled um, payment um, process and the reason that we have done this right we have a scaled pricing structure that um, pushes back on the false ideas of equality that we have been ingrained into in capitalism so um, oh thank you so by facilitating a broader range of options than a fixed price it's possible for more people to access the program. And so the way that we have uh, created this is a three tier process. So the first is the rebalancing. And so this is for those who have more than enough financial resources um, and have a desire to support others in the act of rebalancing systemic um, in, in equity. But I think also it's a really interesting process navigating these because it's deeply intuitive right, and historical. Um, so we have rebalancing and this is at this price you can see. And then we have the fair access, which is what we deem as like, this is the cost of, of this course and this training, um, knowing that it doesn't mean that's the value of it. I think that's also something we need to kind of extract. And then we have supported access, um, which is for those who are currently limited with financial resources, uh, but still want to participate in the training. And there are various payment plans. Um, so you can do monthly, you can do um, annually, you can do bi-annually. Um, and the... Um, it's up to you like when when you pay it in terms of when in the month makes sense uh, makes sense for you um to secure your your space now it's a deposit of 250 dollars um i think we're we've got quite a few people signing in already or right on the cusp of signing in so um yeah what I've said to um, many other folks is just maybe by mid July have made a decision. Um, and then it gives you kind of a month to prepare knowing that you're about to enter this container, um, but just as a little bit of a time frame around decisioning. Are there any questions around that? Um, it's we're global I mean we have people from all over the world and so the process of payment is most uh, helpful if it's PayPal um, and that kind of facilitates facilitate, facilitates the process and oh thank you Angel so in the in the sign up in the chat box there's a link to sign up yeah, also people ask, so when you're signing up, you're just paying the deposit, but there's a mini question asked, and one of them is what uh, pricing you're aiming to uh, support. So you'd be asked to choose one of the three price. You can always change that, you know, uh, before you join by September, but uh, it will be asked to you in the process of sign up. And this might be more... Um... Like in terms of invoicing, is it possible to make the invoice to, like, is it possible to get an invoice so that I can expense it? Yeah, I don't know. It works uh, cross border and things like that. But yeah, yeah, we can finally met an invoice for the payment you made. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I'll close my. 
No, I like that. <laughs> that was really like nice. Okay, I can invoice it. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Cool. Um, thank you everyone for being here and thank you for, for listening into um, this course and what we're trying to bring about in this world and, and maybe even shift the culture in the wellness space a little bit, right? This is kind of our kind of our drop um, into the waters. Um, like I said, we're we're starting soon-ish. So um, yeah, listen to any questions, listen to your body, um, feel it, breathe with it, um, see if this is something that that feels good, that feels aligned. Notice if there's any kind of discomfort or any queries and doubts, and we're really only a message away. So shoot us a message and um, we can be in conversation immediately around it. Um, we will have another information session in August, um, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and there are various different spaces that we're going to be in so we're in community um, there's our online breathwork sessions um, I'll be in and around spaces in person so in Germany if any of you anyone else is going to be at the global inspiration conference I'm presenting there next week I'll be at Glastonbury if anyone's at Glastonbury um, at the breathe festival so there's a breathe festival in the UK that I will be um, facilitating and teaching at as well and then if you're close to the Catskills, I'll be, if you're interested to meet in person, I'll be up in, at the sanctuary at the end of August. Um, so if you're around, yeah, come on over. Yeah, we'll have probably some community breath work with all the students. So, you know, you'll, you'll probably just check our calendar, but uh, in person with all the students. And, you know, it's a good way to, to meet everyone also and to get a feel for yeah, for that training that it's a bit unorthodox and uh, how does it translate? <laughs> All right. Wonderful. And Anna and I are breathing uh, pretty much weekly uh, people. So you can find that also if you want to get a taste. I know some of you have breathed with me and maybe some of you have breathed with Anna, but you know, uh, if you're listening to the recording, to really invite you to have an experience. Uh, it's really good to have an experience. Uh, come, you know, I do my breath on Saturday evening, and Anna, you it's uh, during the week, right? Yeah, but they're on pause, and I have monthly breath work sessions at the I end know. of the month. Yeah. Um, but just weekly is getting in festival season. It gets too much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So come breathe with us and commit us or like Anna said you know reach out if there's something on your mind or you've been sitting with it and you still have question you know Anna and I can carve personal private time with you and make sure you know we answer any question and see if it's the right uh, training for you or not uh, so there's no yeah no pressure there but yeah we're available for questions thanks a lot <laughs> thank you thank you very much everyone yeah, yeah it was great to connect thank with all of you Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.